ओम भूरभुव स्वह तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्वीमह दियो यो न प्रचोदयात् ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर थ्री ऑन उपदेशाश्रम ए मोस्ट प्रेफर्ड एंड रिकमेंडेड बुक बाय भगवान श्री रामना महर्षि फॉर हिज डिवोटीज एंड अदर साधकाज डूइंग सेल्फ एनक्वायरी फॉर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड लिब्रेशन दिस वीडियो नंबर थ्री स्टार्ट्स विद स्टेंजा नंबर इलेवन वायु रोधनलीयते मन जल जाल पक्षी वद्रो वद्रोध साधनम द माइंड मे बी सब्ड्यूड बाई रेगुलेटिंग द ब्रेथ जस्ट एज ए बर्ड इज रेस्टोरेंट वेन कॉट इन ए नेट दिस प्रैक्टिस कंट्रोल्स द माइंड ब्रेथ रेस्टोरेंट वायु रोधना इज Affected in rather violent ways by hot yogis, resulting in complete stoppage or kumbhaka. The Maharshi did not recommend such extremes and used the word kumbhaka in the sense of regulation to be accomplished by watching the intake and outflow of breath. this causes the rate of respiration to slow down and in turn tends to quiet the mind which is then able to keep its attention on the i or self in any case the maharshi did not give breath control a high priority he said one need not attempt breath control mind control is enough breath control is recommended for the man who cannot control his mind straight away it may do as an aid but can never lead to the goal itself a more advanced man will naturally go direct to control of mind without wasting his time in practicing control of breath stanza number 12 chitta vaya vaj chit kriya yutah sakhiyor divyai shakti mulaka mind and breath manifesting in thought and action branch out from a common source the shakti since breathing and thinking are rooted in the same life force the control of one amounts to control of the other one might over simplify by saying each time an individual breathes the mind celebrates no breath no thought no thought no breath in the story of the goblin vitala vasishta tells rama both are one only like the flower and its fragrance or sesame seed and the oil in it prana breath and mind stand to one another in the relationship of the sporter and sported if either of them is slain then the other will also cease to exist the destruction of both will confer moksha on all the greatness of upadesha ashram lies not so much in the content of each verse as in the way that the poem ties together all the major margas or paths of spiritual discipline in this verse for instance there is nothing new in the earliest of all his writings who am i 
Maharshi says, the source of the mind on the one hand and of breath and vital forces on the other is one and the same. Stanza number 13. <laughs> Laya vinasne ubye rodhne Laya gatam punar bhavati no mirtam Absorption or Laya and destruction or Nasa are the two kinds of mind control. When merely absorbed, it emerges again, but not when it is destroyed. When the jiva is able to bring about the temporary absorption of the mind by pranayama, he experiences in that state a form of smadhi or experience of a reality in which the ego ceases to intrude and intense happiness is enjoyed. But as soon as breath control ceases and I am the body sense resumes and the jiva returns to his normal active state of bondage with its pains and pleasure, pleasures. Sri Maharshi describes it this way. The involution of the mind in the self, but without its destruction, is Kevala Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Even though one practices it for years together, if one has not rooted out the vasanas, he will not attain salvation. Again, referring to this verse, breath control can only produce manolaya, temporary suspension of mind. One pointed meditation alone can can lead to destruction of the mind. Stanza number 14 Pran bandhanali manasam ek chintanas mit yad When the mind has been suspended by breath restraint, it may then be annihilated by single-minded attention to the self. Once the mind has been calmed by the regulation of the breath, one should hold one's attention on the self, seeking the identity of the I. If this practice persists, eventually, all other mental activity will dry up and the stream of thoughts will disappear. Then, in the absence of the sense of separateness from the Lord and from the world, a sense which thought has sustained, one arrives at the knowledge that there is only one consciousness and the individual is only that. Stanza number 15 Nasta mansod karsta yoginath kartyam asti kim swastim yataha What action remains to be done by that great yogi whose mind has been extinguished and who rests in his own true and transcendent state of being. Here, the question refers to the state of the Jivan Mukta or realized man. When asked about this, the Maharshi explained that the Jnani is fully aware that his true state of being remains fixed and stationary and all actions go on around him. 
देर मे बी नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन ए ज्ञानी एंड एन अज्ञानी इन देयर कंडक्ट द डिफरेंस लाइज इन देयर एंगल्स ऑफ विजन द इग्नोरेंट मैन आइडेंटिफाइज हिमसेल्फ विद द ईगो एंड मिस्टेक्स इट्स एक्टिविटीज फॉर दोज ऑफ द सेल्फ वेर एज द ईगो ऑफ द ज्ञानी हैज बीन लॉस्ट द लिबरेटेड स्टेट इज डिस्क्राइब्ड बाई शंकरा इन हीज आत्मा बोधा आई एम एट्रीब्यूटलेस फंक्शनलेस एटरनल डाउटलेस स्टैंडलेस चेंजलेस फॉर्मलेस फ्री एंड अनकंडीशनड स्टेंजा नंबर सिक्सटीन दृश्यवारीत चित्तमात्म चित्तदर्शन ततो दर्शन इफ वंस अटेंशन इज टर्न अवे फ्रॉम एक्सटर्नल ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ सेंस एंड फोकस्ड ऑन द लाइट ऑफ द सेल्फ दैट इज द ट्रू विजन ऑफ रियलिटी टू रियलाइज द सेल्फ इट इज नेसेसरी टू गिव वंस अटेंशन सोली टू द आई द फर्स्ट पर्सन this is possible only if one turns his attention away from otherness from other things and other persons that make up the objective world and away from images and ideas that relates to the world this process is what is the what is the maharishi has termed atma vichara or self inquiry if one leaves aside vichara the most efficacious sadhana there are no other adequate means whatsoever to make the mind subside if made to subside by other means it will remain as if subsided but will rise again on external and internal the maharishi has said because your outlook is externally directed you speak of a without in that state you are advised to look within in fact the self is neither within nor without stanza number 17 manasam pu kim margane kirte naiv manasam marg arjwat again if one persist in making what is this mind of mine it will be found that there is really no such thing as mind this is the direct path what the individual all along has thought was his mind turns out to be nothing other than his self the mind has no existence of its own and ceases to function once its nature is revealed to keep one's attention on the self is the direct way to know the mind this is the gyana marga or vichara sankra also insisted on the necessity for this path compared with all other means gyana knowledge is the only direct means to liberation as cooking is impossible without fire so is liberation impossible without knowledge while knowledge is thus eventually essential to realization it is not always advisable for everyone regarding for everyone regardless of the stage of understanding or 
spiritual development. When asked, can the path of enquiry be followed by all aspirants, the Maharishi replied, this is suitable only for the ripe souls. The rest should follow different methods according to the state of their minds. Stanza number 18 Virta Satvahem Virti Masrita Virtyo Mano Vidvihem Manaha What one has thought of as his mind is merely a bundle of thoughts. All these thoughts depend upon the one thought of I, the ego. Therefore, the so-called mind is the I thought. The power of the I thought is limitless. In Yoga Vasishta, Shiva informs Vasishta that this idea of I brings in its train the ideas of time, space and other potencies. The mind is the I am the body illusion. The Maharshi says specifically the mind is only identity of the self with the body. Clearly, the core of the Maharishi's teaching involves an understanding of the nature of the mind and its relation to human bondage and freedom. In preceding verses, the control or annihilation of the mind has been discussed. Now we are advised that the mind is simply a bundle of thoughts wrapped about a feeling of I wrongly associated with the body. Stanza number 19 Ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvatahe ai patataye am nids vicharanam. If one asks himself, where does this I come from? It will vanish. This is self-enquiry or atam vichara. Since the feeling I am the body is illusory, it cannot continue the masquerade under sustained scrutiny. The Maharishi has taught the thought I am this body of flesh and blood is the one thread on which are strung the various other thoughts. Therefore, if we turn inwards, inquiring where is this I, all thoughts, including the I thought, will come to an end and self-knowledge will then spontaneously shine forth within the cave, the heart as I, I. Stanza number 20. Ahami nas bhaje ham mahantaya safurti hirtisvayam pram puranstaha. When this I vanished and merged in its source, there appears spontaneously and continuously an I, I. This is the heart, the infinite supreme being. Devotees become, devotees sometimes had difficulty understanding Sri Maharishi's use of the term I, though in this and other statements he makes his meaning clear. In the ultimate sense, I is God's name or the name of our own real selves. In reference to the limited, ignorant individual, I refers to the ego 
or the I am the body illusion. This illusory I is discontinuous, broken in waking and dream, absent in deep sleep. The Maharishi refers to the true I as I, I to indicate its continuous nature. Actually, there is no way that this infinite I, I can be grasped intellectually by anyone. The true I appears or is experienced only when the mind is dead, either temporarily in deep sleep or permanently in case of the jnani. Again, in the ultimate sense, there is neither I, the ego, nor any other thing. Only Brahma exists always, full of bliss everywhere. So, I end this video here. Next video number 4, we will start with stanza number 21. And this will cover the whole book of Upadesa Saram. Thank you my dear friends for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Namaskar my dear friends. Namaskar.